ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد عن أبو أيوب عن أبي أيوب رضي الله عنه قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله علمني وأوجز فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا قمت في صلاتك فصل صلاة مودع ولا تكلم بكلام تعتذر منه وأجمع اليأس عما في أيد الناس رواه ابن ماجا وهذا حديث حسن Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was approached by a man who came to him and said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, teach me but make it something concise. I can't handle a lot. Summarize it all for me in some beautiful short advice. He said, when you stand to pray, pray like a man who's bidding farewell, like it's his last prayer. He said, وسلم, do not say anything for which you have to apologize for. And thirdly, he said, do not give up hope. For, or upon, give up hope for what you see that the other people have. Do not crave or desire what the other people have been given. So when we look at this hadith and we expand upon it, we must remind ourselves that although this was a concise hadith, there is support throughout the Quran and the Sunnah to validate that if we can do these things simply, we will be on the path, inshallah, to go to Jannah, to go to paradise. So breaking them up. إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ فَصَلِّ صَلَاةً مُوَدِّعٍ When you stand to pray, pray like a man bidding farewell. And unfortunately, many of us pray nowadays like it's not a big deal. Like it's just something that we pay no attention to. We do it quickly. Or some, they'll miss a prayer here or there. <clears throat> or they'll pray beyond its time. Or they'll rush the prayer even though they do the five of them. And they do not consider that they're doing anything wrong or neglectful. And this is where we have to go back and look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيَّنًا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, you see some things as being minor or insignificant, but with Allah, the Almighty, with God, the Almighty, they are great. So do not be like the one who prays, like a woodpecker who's just pecking his is beak on the ground to pick up food, and this is how fast some of us pray the, the, in, when we make sujood. We belittle this matter time and time again, again, but it is a grand matter. So we have no guarantee that we will even pray Salat al-Jum'ah in a few minutes, or that we'll make it to Salat al-Asr at 5.15, or we'll make it to Salat al-Nadr at sunset and the likes of these matters. So we should pray every prayer as, it's, as if it is our last, because Allah said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul will taste death. Ain't nobody been living at one point from the past generations that's still alive today. We live and part of the sunnah of this life is to die and Allah will make it come upon every person. 
every soul will taste death kamaqal. And it's not something you can escape. As Allah said, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالَمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, what means say to them, verily the death from which you run away from and you flee from, it will find you. You cannot escape it. And then you will return to the knower, the all-knower of the seen and the unseen, and he'll tell you what you used to do. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we shouldn't settle to just be a Muslim, we should want to be a mu'min, a believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, He gave us those characteristics. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Allah, He said, successful and leader are the believers, may Allah make us from them. Then He gave us their sifat. <coughs> he gave us their characteristics. The first one, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who in their prayers, they have tranquility, sublimity, full submissiveness, focus. And this is the success of the prayer of the believer. And this is what we should aim to have. And we should pray them at their fixed times, not delaying them past their times, because this is part of the prayer. Allah, He said, وَوَيْنٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَصَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ So Allah, He said, and woe be unto those who perform the prayers. Or wail, according to some of the Mufassirin, is a river, a valley in the depths of the hellfire. For those who pray, this is for the munafiqeen, the hypocrites in their prayers. What is their description? Allah said it in the next ayah. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who, they pray, their prayer, they pray their prayers beyond their stated fixed times. So the prayer is not something we should neglect. As we're going to see, it is called عمود Islam, the pillar of Islam. It is the sila, the connection, the con- communication between you and your Creator, between you and your Lord. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, every prayer should be prayed as if it is our last. And with some submissiveness. When Jibreel alayhi salam, angel Gabriel, he came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِحْسَانِ Tell me what is al-ihsan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said, أَنْ تَعْبُضُ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُمْ تَرَاهُ فَهُوَ يُرَاهُ He said, ihsan al-ihsan. This is higher than iman. This is higher than having يعني, the highest level of faith. There's Islam, the Muslim. Then there's the moment the believer, then ihsan, that you worship Allah as if you see Him. But knowing that you cannot see Him, you know He sees you. Imagine every prayer, every prayer. As if you're being watched by your Creator, even though you don't know what He looks like, you don't know what He, you cannot see Him. But it's like you have eyes on you. Just as if it's your parent watching you, and seeing how you're doing it, or somebody else judging you or grading you. If you prayed this way, then you would pray a better prayer. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, remember when rushing through your prayers from the Fatiha, which is a rukun of the prayer, the Rukur, a rukun, a pillar of the prayer, the Sajda, a rukun, a pillar of the prayer, if you don't do them right, you may have no prayer, or you have no prayer. Remember that day, that ayah, Afwan, where we said, يَوْمِ يَكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السَّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ That day where it will be said, remember the day when the shin of Allah the lower leg of Allah, and it is not like the leg of the creation. Just because we say this, does not mean that it's like the leg of the creation. Allah has a shin because He said so in the Qur'an. And we don't manipulate or metamorph or change this, meaning in any way we accept it as it is, and it's different than ours. Remember the day when the shin of Allah will be laid bare, and they will be called to make sajda and prostrate to Allah, but they, those who were the, the hypocrites in their prayers, they will not be able to do so. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ تَرْهَقُهُمْ ذِلَّةً وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Their eyes will be there cast down. Ignomy will cover over them. They used to be called to prostrate, to make their prayers, to pray to Allah while they were healthy and good in the life of this world, but they did not do it. Do not set yourself up for a bad, or a horrible, or a punishable day of resurrection, which is 50,000 years long. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions in the authentic hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Al-Tirmidhi, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَوْ إِنَّ أَوَّلَ مَا يُحَاسِبْ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ صَلَاتَهِ فَإِنْ صَلَحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَهَ وَأَنْجَحْ وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسَرْ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said. The first of a man's deeds that he will be judged by on the day of resurrection will be his prayer. If it is sound, if it is good, if it was done well and within its time and with some 
humility, then they will be safe and successful. But if it is incomplete, they will be unfortunate. They will be in an unfortunate state and in a state of loss. Yani as a loser. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ubad ibn Islamit, ibn Islamit, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب رواه البخاري. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there is no prayer for the one who does not read Surah Al-Fatiha in every rak'ah. According to يعني أهل العلم, the stronger opinion, this is for the Imam and the Ma'moon and the, the follower, even in the out loud prayers. That the Fatiha must be read. Say you're praying it even by yourself. Do you know how many people finish the Fatiha in under 10 seconds? When the Prophet ﷺ used to recite it, and he would lengthen the last letter as he would stretch it out, and he would pause after every ayah. This was his method of reading the Quran. In Salah, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni asalli, and he commanded, Pray as you have seen me praying. And if you make a mistake in this, and it's a rukun, a pillar of the prayer, then you can have no prayer. Is it worth it to take your time and do it as the Prophet ﷺ did? Of course it is. عن البراءة رضي الله عنه قال كان ركوع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وسجوده وإذا رفع رأسه من الركوع وبين السجدتين قريبا من السواء رواه البخاري البراءة سد تباوي the ركوع the prostrations the sujood the standing after the ركوع after the bowing the sitting between the two prostrations of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to be equal in duration and how many flip flop through as if it's an exercise. We're taking away from our own what well, well, we would benefit from. Allah's kingdom, His dominion, His kingship does not decrease. If we do our prayers wrong or bad, we decrease. We get the cut. We lose out. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أقرب ما يكون العبد من ربه وهو ساجد فأكثر الدعاء رواه مسلم. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that the closest that a servant is to his Lord. Not physically, but to his Lord's help, his Lord's guidance, his Lord's pleasure is in that sajda. When your palms and your knees and your toes and your forehead and your nose are on the ground, bowing to the Creator, uh, Afwan, making prostration sajda to the, the Creator, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the one who is above his throne, separate from his creation, but whose knowledge is everywhere. When you're in that position, you're the closest to your Lord, to his pleasure, to his help, his guidance. So take your time in it. فَأَكْثَرُ الدُّعَاءِ Make dua in it. That's the best time to make dua. To supplicate to Allah, to ask of Allah, to beg of Allah. And yet, it's, a, it's one of the most humbling positions, but it's the one that we rush through in our prayers. And every time we advise, you see some people take this one, and you see some as if it goes one in, ear, in one ear and out the other. This sajda must be safeguarded. Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu said, the worst kind of thief is the one who steals from the prayer. So the companion said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa how can someone steal from their prayer? He said, they do not fulfill the ruku' and the sujood of the prayer. They don't do them properly. They do them fast. They don't give them their rights where the bones and the body settles. And Abu An Abi Mas'ud radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تجزئ صلاة لا يقيم الرجل فيها صلبه في الركوع والسجود رواه النساء وهذا حديث صحيح. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said no prayer is valid. The prayer is not acceptable in which the man or the woman does not maintain their back at ease when bowing and prostrating. Meaning you can't just do this. The back has to settle, be parallel with the ground if you're physically capable of it. The bones should rest, then you should begin saying, Subhana Rabbi al azim and the likes of it. And the same for the sajda, the bones should rest and they should settle and they should be in their place. And this should not be something which is rushed. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we lose $20, we lose a piece of jewelry, we can't find a ring, we uh, you know, misplace an important letter, we can't find the remote to the TV, whatever it is, you'll go crazy. You'll spend minutes, hours, maybe days, looking for it, troubled about it, can't sleep because of it, but we miss a prayer, and we sleep like a baby. We miss a jum'ah, a week of prayers, it doesn't affect us in any way. You're thinking this matter is minor, this salah that we're asked to do, 
the Fatiha, the Rukur, the Sajood, and all of its pillars. But really with Allah's Azim, it is great. So be mindful of this. The second part of the advice from the Prophet Sallallahu Do not say anything for which you have to apologize. Guard your tongue. Do not say things you have to go back and get the courage to say sorry for and go and apologize to somebody for. So many times people get themselves into these ruts, into these arguments and can't find it in themselves to reconcile. And you know what? All it's going to be is if you go to Jannah, the two of you are delayed from entering Jannah until there's salah, until you uh, make up and until you bury those hatches. Yet some people will go through a life of misery because someone they should have made up with and their pride, their ego stopped them from it. And that person, that one of those two people died, the whole life you carry that burden on your shoulders. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you're thinking the tongue, even though it's a little piece of flesh, a part of your whole body and respect your whole body, you're thinking it's a small matter, what you say, what you do, but with Allah it is something grand. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت رواه بخاري ومسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said let him who believes in Allah and the last day say what is good or be silent how many of us know this hadith memorize this hadith say it to one another yet again that arrogance that pride gets in the way and you're not able to restrain your tongue. This is from the Prophet ﷺ himself. Let him who believes in Allah on the last day say what's good or not speak at all. Yet we are so bad when it comes to this. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said that the majority of the sins of the children of Adam, the majority of their sins are going to be because of the tongue. The lying comes from the tongue. The backbiting from the tongue. The slandering from the tongue. The cursing from the tongue, the belittling from the tongue, the looking down on the people from the tongue. So many things are the source, the source of the tongue, and this is why he mentioned this in this hadith with Shaykh al-Bani. He has it Sahih al-Jama, and it's an authentic hadith. So do not speak unless your speech is good, unless it has a clear benefit. And if you doubt it, zip it, and do not speak at all. عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان فتقول فتقول استق الله فينا فإنما نحن بك فإن استقمت استقمنا وإذا وججت وججنا رواه التمري وهذا حديث حسن رافق محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said when the son of Adam wakes up in the morning all of the body parts all of the body parts, the strong ones, the big muscles of the, the biceps, the arms, the forearms, the legs, all the body parts bow down to the tongue and say, we're a part of you. If you're good, if you're sound, then we will be good. So fear Allah regarding us. If you're straight, we will be straight. But if you're crooked, we will be crooked. Uqba bin Amr radiallahu anhu, he said, I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can I achieve salvation? How can I save myself? So that I am from the inhabitants of Jannah. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ لِسَانَكْ وَلْيَسَعَكَ بَيْتُكْ وَأَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِيئَتِكْ This hadith which is sahih in the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi. Uqba when he asked the Prophet وسلم, how can I achieve salvation? He told him, control your tongue. Keep to your house as meaning let your house be sufficient for you and weep over your sins. Look at how many advices come and more and more and more about the tongue. Malik, he related from Zayd ibn Aslam, from his father, that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he walked by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, and he was pulling on his tongue very hard. Not just grabbing it, pulling on it, as if he was hurting himself. So he said to him, Mah ghafar Allahu lak. Umar, he told Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, what are you doing? Stop this, may Allah forgive you. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he replied, إِنَّ هَذَا أَوْرَدْنِ الْمَوَارِدِ He said, this, my tongue has brought me to a dangerous place. And this was the best of this ummah after the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Look how they called themselves to account. Look how they faced themselves and called themselves to account to be upright, to be righteous, to be noble, to be good men of withstanding. 
Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he narrates from the Prophet ﷺ that the Messenger of Allah, he said, shall I not inform you what the head of the matter is, its pillar and its peak? So he said, Bala ya Rasulullah he said, Ra'as al-amr al-islam wa'amuduhu salah wa virwata salamihi al-jihad. He said, the head of the matter with us is Islam. Its pillar is the prayer and its peak is jihad, the legislative jihad, not the one that anyone can claim. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, shall I not tell you the foundation of all of that? Again, he said, Bala ya Rasulullah, tell me so I can fulfill it and, and not be in danger. فَأَخَذَ بِلِسَانِهِ وَقَالَ كُفَّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا He took a hold of his tongue, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, restrain this. He said, restrain this. So Mu'ad, he asked him, will people go to Jahannam, go to the hellfire, just because of their tongues and the fruits of their tongues? He said, may your mother be bereaved of you. وَهَلْ يُقُبُّ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى وَجُوهِهِمْ أَوْ قَالَ عَلَى مَنَخِلِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ he said, is there anything that's going to throw people into the hellfire on their faces or on their noses other than the tongue? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah said, يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says in the Qur'an what means on the day when their tongues, their hands, their legs, their feet will bear witness against what they used to do. No one may hear what you say with your tongue. Or the fitna, the problems, the trials you cause with your tongues, with your speech. No one may hear what you say to your spouse that harms them, or to your children that harms them, or against your brothers or your sisters in Islam that harms them. But Allah knows it. And on the day of resurrection, the tongue, the feet, the legs, the hands, they will all bear witness to what we used to do. For Allah and His pleasure and against Allah in, in disobedience to Allah. Abu Darda, he narrated that there was a dispute between Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he made Umar angry. And he, res, he, he resented this. So Abu Bakr, he followed Umar, asking him, forgive me, forgive me. And he kept following behind him, behind him, forgive me, forgive me. So Umar, refusing to forgive him, he entered his home and he closed his door. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he went away upset and saddened by this. Umar, he repented radiallahu anhu. He came to his senses and he said, okay, I have to go and I find Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But at that time, Abu Bakr had already went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he could tell from his look that Abu Bakr was upset and that someone had quarreled and fought with him. In the meantime, Umar, he repented and felt sorry and went after him. And he came and he found the Prophet sallallahu And he related the story to him. فَغَدَبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ So the Prophet ﷺ, he got upset, he got angry. He got angry. And Abu Bakr started saying, O oh Allah's Messenger, It was me who wronged him, it was me who wronged him. Do not be upset with him. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم, هَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَارُكُ لِي صَاحِبِي إِنِّي كُنْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنِّي كُنْتُ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا فَقُلْتُمْ كَذَبْتَ وَقَالُوا أَبُو بَقْرٍ صَدَقْتَ So the Prophet ﷺ, when he heard this, and Abu Bakr is pleading with him, do not be mad at Umar. I wronged him. I did what was wrong to him. I was the one who oppressed him or wronged him in some way. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, by, <clears throat> he said, are you people leaving for me my companion Abu Bakr? Are you people leaving for me my companion? When I said, O oh people, I am sent as the messenger of Allah وسلم, to you all. You all called me a liar, but Abu Bakr, he called me. He said that I had affirmed the truth. The quarrels, they need to be squashed. They need to be put past. Watch out what your tongue says. وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْ Do not say anything you have to apologize for. This was the advice of our Messenger ﷺ because you never know that you'll have the chance to do so. أَقُولُ قَلِي هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ إِيَوْ لَكُمْ إِذُوَ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ دَنُوبًا إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَخِرُهُ وَنَسْتَهْدِهُ وَنَصَلِّي وَنُسَلِّمْ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدُ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمَ تَسْلِيمًا كَثِيرًا وَبَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when the Prophet ﷺ, he was asked, give me an advice and keep it brief, he told 
the man three things. One, pray every prayer like it's your last prayer, like you're bidding farewell, like you'll never get to pray another prayer. Two, do not say anything you have to apologize for. And lastly, and give up hope for what the people have. Again, many times we spend our life looking at the pomp and the glitter and what the other people have, desiring what they have of money, of, of love, of family, of property, of education, of status, of whatever it may be. This is how we are. This is how we live much of our lives. Yet, Allah said again, You're thinking this matter is small, that you looking at others and desiring what they have, you think it's a minor matter, but with Allah, it's something great. Because when you do that, you are belittling what He has given you and what He has blessed you with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَن يُرِدْ ثَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَن يُرِدْ ثَوَابَ الْآخِرَةِ نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَسَنَجِزِ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means and whoever desires the reward in this life. Whoever wants a good life here and that's your concern, Allah will give it to you. And whoever desires a reward in the hereafter, we will give him or her thereof, and we shall reward those who are grateful. Yet when you're always looking what other people have, indeed, that is ingratitude. Without a lie, you are saying to Allah, you haven't given me enough. So you are showing that you are ungrateful for what you have been blessed with. Allah says, وَلَا تُمُدَّنَّ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِّنْهُمْ زَحْرَةً حَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنُهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْفُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means, and strain not your eyes longing for the things we have given for enjoyment to the various groups. Again, we spend so much of our life looking. This person's a disbeliever, look what, how easy his life is. This person doesn't pray, look how rich they are. This person doesn't do this. Look at the ease they've been given in this life. This person doesn't do this or does this wrong, transgresses Allah's limits in this way. And look at what they've been given. This is exactly how we live our life. But Allah, He commanded us, and strain not your eyes longing for the things of enjoyment to their, that the various groups have been given. The polytheists and the disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, the splendor of the life of this world that we may test them thereby, but the provision, the good reward with Allah in the hereafter, with your Lord is better and more lasting. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anziru ila man huwa asfala minkum wa la tanziru ila man huwa fawqakum fa huwa ajdaru an la tazdaru ni'mat Allahi alaykum muttafiqun alayhi. Bukhari and Muslim, they related or they authenticated in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, look at those who are lower than you financially with health with regards to family, with regards to love and provision, look at those who have less than you. And do not look at those who are higher than you, those who have more money, those who have more food, those who have more family, those who have more land, those who have more status, whatever it may be, lest you belittle the favors Allah conferred upon you. When you look at those who have less than you, you praise Allah for what He's given you. But when you look at those who have more than you, you're showing ingratitude to your Creator. And you're saying that you haven't been given enough. And unfortunately, this is the sad case of many of us. Look at the pictures coming out of everyone. You'd think, okay, if we had no examples, maybe it's easy to follow this. Look at the things that pop up now on this social media. You see now, just in one strike in the Gaza, it just pops up and you see a family sitting in rubble. Kids, the wife, the husband sitting there, their home destroyed. Where am I going to get my shelter for tonight? The heat is coming. Where am I going to get cooled down when the heat comes? Where am I going to yani, have a place, safe place to sleep? Where will I find food? Where will I find provision? And we're here bask, basking in luxury. Even if you live in a tent on the freeway, compared to what our brothers and sisters are going in, you're in luxury. And yet, we, see, we act like we don't know this happens. In Yemen, still starving out of food, you see the pictures... They bring tears to the eyes. Kids, when their stomachs are puffed out, you see their bones, their ribcage is malnourishing. In Sudan, in Somalia, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, all over the Muslim lands, we have the examples, but we're not taking heed. Oh, that's sad. Allah, make it, Allah make it easy for them. And then we go off, back to this life. 
be content, my dear brothers and sister, sisters, with what Allah has given you. And do not long for what you see that you think what other people have, thinking that it may be good for you. Because Allah said, If only we can remember this ayah daily. And perhaps Allah said what means. And perhaps you may see a thing as bad for you, but it's good for you. You just don't know it yet. And perhaps you see something as good for you, you're overjoyed by it. But it may be bad for you, it may be evil for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. Be content with what Allah gives you. Know that He will test you because He loves you. And He wants to see good come out of you so that you can be entered into Jannah and live a, par- a life of eternity in paradise. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَأَرْضَ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَكُنْ أَخْنَ النَّاسِ The Prophet وسلم, he said, Be satisfied with what Allah has allotted for you. You will be the richest of people. The rich one isn't the Elon Musk and the Forbes and the, whoever owns these big companies and all those things. The rich one is the one who, even if they have the least of the people, they're the happiest. They're content. They praise and thank Allah as if they've been given everything. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظُلُومًا فَثَّارُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, what means, and Allah gave you what you asked for. And if you were to count the blessings of Allah, you would never be able to enumerate them. You would miss not one, not hundreds, not thousands, not tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, millions, billions. You would not be able to remember them all. Every beat of the heart, every function of every cell in your body is a ni'mah, a blessing, a favor that some other people don't have. And yet we do not thank Allah, nor praise Him for the good that He has given us. The Prophet ﷺ, he was asked by a man who came to him and said, O Messenger of Allah, direct me to an act which, if I do it, will cause Allah to love me and the people to love me. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Izhad fi dunya yuhibbak Allah, wa izhad fi ma inda nas yuhibbak al nas. Rawahu ibn Majah, wa hadha hadithun hasan. Prophet Muhammad's response to this man You want the people to love you, you want Allah to love you, renounce this world. Meaning, don't care that you have all the material possessions of it. Don't tie yourself to this world. You live in it, enjoy what is halal of it and permissible of it, but tie yourself to wanting to be under the throne of Allah in the highest of paradise with the prophets and the martyrs and the first to believe and the righteous ones. And Allah will love you. Renounce this world, Allah will love you. And you renounce what the people possess, and the people will love you. Give it up. Do not long for what the people have. You'll be the richest of people. Be content with what Allah gave you. You'll be the richest of people. So these are the advices in summary. Pray every prayer as if it's your last. Do not say things you have to apologize for. And give up hoping and craving and wanting what the people have. May Allah make us of those who can fulfill this